Good morning, everyone. We'll talk today about the current energies from May 10th to May 17th-ish, as well as the, the current Gene Key, which is the 23rd, the Alchemy of Simplicity, which is happening by the, the 10th through the 15th of May. So a couple things going on. Mercury is going direct on Sunday, May 14th. Jupiter is entering back into Taurus, or I shouldn't say back into, <laughs> Jupiter is entering into Taurus the 16th of May, where it's going to be squaring Pluto retrograde at zero degrees of Aquarius. And this is the beginning of the fixed grand cross energies that we will be experiencing on May 20th, right after the new moon on the 19th. And Jupiter in Taurus is an expansive energy, expanding the bigger picture of those Taurus themes. And it's designed to help us move forward in our lives based on our new sense of self-worth and based upon how we know and how we have learned that our energy is valuable and all the different ways of, of understanding and knowing and realizing our inherent worth and our value. And Jupiter in Taurus is going to help support us build a life that reflects that. Mercury retrograde in Taurus on May 12th is sextiling Saturn in Pisces. And it's also sextiling Venus in Cancer at six degrees and therefore there's a trine happening between saturn and venus so what this could all mean there could be some heightened intuition because of the cancerian and piscean energies mercury retrograde in taurus it's like mercury stopped right it's it's receiving these energies so it's receiving perhaps new insights new clarity um, from maybe even dream states. And we're really being invited to trust what's flowing through us and allowing our mind to rest and to be more open. Mercury in retrograde, those thoughts, the communication, this slowing down to just receive and feel, letting go of the hows of and and the whys and all of those questions and that over analyzing and the anxieties that come with an overactive mind this time is really to go inward and to feel and to continuing to open up space to declutter to come back to what's coming with us and what is not and it's um, really emphasizing the feminine energies, these placements, uh, these loving and nurturing and caring and, and trusting in our feelings, allowing the heart to guide you and really doing this for ourselves, really doing this for ourselves as we know that times have been a little bit um, turbulent and chaotic as as real lot so many things are coming up to the surface it's so important to to nurture ourselves and love ourselves as we would a small child that's struggling or or, or having a tantrum or you know what have you it's it's really here to come back to to loving ourselves right now being gentle May 13th through May 16th, Jupiter 
is at the final degrees of Aries, at 29 degrees of Aries. And this was where the solar eclipse was at on April 19th and April 20th. And so it's crossing over this eclipse point and it's going to activate it again. And those that have planets or points or placements at 29 degrees, this is going to be felt most likely more strongly. It's going to exaggerate and expand Jupiter. What came up perhaps back at that solar eclipse, but also knowing and remembering that Jupiter offers its protection, like a big giant spiritual bubble around what it is that we have realized what we have initiated what we are initiating so so trusting in that divine protection and also trusting that the clarity will come all in due time we really just need to to rest and be right where we need to be right now as things will move up again but now isn't the time to be making huge external moves that'll start happening towards the end of the month right now it's more of internal shifts again you know what is coming with us during this big move and what is not and as i'm speaking this it's like so literally being reflective in my life right now and Jason and my our life right now is we're packing up our house to to move across the country and to birth a child and it's like this is it's and what's coming up as we're doing that as well it's like living within this space of boxes and clutter and trying to find some comfort and continuously little by little going through things of does this bring value to my life is this worthy of coming with me and what is not is being either donated or or purged and it's this inner inner way of being right now it's like we see it all kind of out in front of us and trusting and knowing that there will be some big movement happening soon but right now finding that that comfort within the comfort and making as much space as we can to have more clarity because we all know that feeling when we go through a junk drawer when we go through a closet that's over stuff it's like we don't even know what's in there until we start going through it and then once we do we can we can see what we have but there's typically that resistance and that reluctance to go through it. It could be an overwhelm of, I don't even know where to begin. And even as we're doing it, things that we find, things that come up could be, could bring up old memories, could bring up old feelings. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's all meant to be felt through, to be honored, to be seen, to be acknowledged, and then to let it go as it's not something that we need to shove in another box and take it with us again. So. <sighs> so if we missed something during that solar eclipse, that it was important for us to see, that was important for us to have clarity around of what needs to end or be eclipsed out and or why we are initiating something new, like a higher perspective, Jupiter is going to offer that higher perspective and that clarity to give us even more empowerment of, yes, okay, I'm gonna do a thing now. Jupiter in Aries is connected to you. Aries is about your energy. So what do you want? What, what inspires you? What lights you up? What, what are you passionate about? What do you want to create? And then as it moves into Taurus, Taurus is the tangible plan, the grounded man manifestation of this creative spark. So we're bringing this Aries energy, Jupiter's then bringing it into Taurus and it's how are we going to, all right, now, now, what are we going to do? We don't need to figure it all out right now. This is what this whole next few months and years are going to help us do. It's just knowing that 
we are worthy of creating what we want and then to bring the balance into our life the will the desire to make it happen and trusting that the universe and the divine will provide us all of the answers to our questions as we need Jupiter enters Taurus as I said on May 16th and it's going to give new life to something and if you have planets or placements at zero to two degrees of the earth signs you can look to see the house and where this energy might be showing up for you towards the end of may its energy is going to become even more potent as it moves closer to the north node which will be at three degrees so you can see again if you if anything at three degrees of taurus or the earth signs this could be showing up in a pretty uh tangible way something that you you really see on the outside sometimes Ju jupiter is a feeling where it's just like this feel good feeling this benevolent feeling of expansiveness but with jupiter in an earth it could actually bring into uh, a tangible thing more than just a, a feeling so May 16th through May 22nd, Jupiter is at zero degrees of Taurus and it's squaring Pluto retrograde in Aquarius at zero degrees. And Taurus and Aquarius are both fixed signs. And this could feel like there's a pressure to the notion of where are you going? What are you, and what are you doing in this new world? Pluto and Aquarius, the rebirth into this new era, right? These outside of the box thinkings and, and Jupiter in Taurus, Taurus is just about simplicity. So Pluto and Aquarius can feel very complicated, very complex. And Jupiter and Taurus is just, let's come back to the basis basics. Let's just focus on the simplicity and and like the Taurian themes and energies of love, harmony, of value, right? Don't worry about everything that's going on in the world right now because it's too overwhelming with all of the with the world issues. It's it's knowing that right now is to come just back within to ourselves and allow the ripple effect to expand outwards and to help create this change out in the world so we're it, we are in a time of being in a pause and on hold um <clears throat> pluto and aquarius you know we're going to perhaps have new light coats coming in new new energies coming into our body very expansive new territory we have not been in this territory before this is new areas of our soul that we are exploring and embodying in a new way. And we need time to recalibrate that. Remembering that we are still having this human experience. We can have all of this spiritual knowledge and all of this insight and all of these downloads, but it's grounding into us. We are physical, organic beings and so we need time to recalibrate ourselves and so allowing this transformation to take place at this time we may feel a, a deadlock type of energy of of what to do next especially as as we get even closer to the fixed grand cross but as i said the invitation is to go inward to slow down to really own your uniqueness and and trusting in the process knowing that solutions will appear as they're meant to 
that there is solace in the stillness and to give ourselves some compassion and grace as everything that's new might feel risky and we might not know more than two steps in front of us of, of what's going to happen or or what we're going to do how it's all going to work out so again loving ourselves through this process coming back to our center coming back to our breath using our spiritual techniques and tools and practices that we have cultivated coming back to nature and remembering the cycles of nature and that how we are not separate from that <clears throat> i want to now just briefly talk about the 23rd gene key which brilliantly overlies these energies and you know the gene key will always have <clears throat> a astrological influence as it's it's you know it's tracking the degree of the sun but with mercury retrograde in taurus right now as well this gene key is even more colorful and it's even brought to life even more so the 23rd gene key the shadow is complexity the gift is simplicity and the city is quintessence and it's titled the alchemy of simplicity and the physiology is with the throat and the programming partner is the 43rd it's part of the codon ring the ring of life and death which we have been navigating through and the amino acid boosting. So I'm just gonna read a couple of things from the book and just quote Richard Rudd. As I'm sure as you hear, you'll see how it reflects the current astrological energies. Complexity is the result of the human mind trying to control its environment, its environment. The more humans try to use their minds to create a feeling of security in the world, the more complicated and unsafe the world becomes. The challenge within the 23rd shadow is found in its programming partner, the 43rd shadow of deafness. The 23rd shadow represents an overwhelming human urge to express yourself coupled with the inability to hear either yourself or others, this creates a lethal cocktail. One of the greatest problems for individuals to communicate clearly with others. Hearing yourself means being aware of what is going on inside of you. If you have no such self-awareness, then you are also unable to really hear what is going on outside of you which means that you will not know how to relate to others. Language is immensely powerful as a medium for stirring up the volatile human emotional spirit. Whenever this 23rd shadow speaks, it complicates the situation, which in turn catalyzes an exponential process of misunderstanding that can soon escalate from a mental process to an emotional one. The fear beneath this 23rd shadow is a meeting of intolerance and being excluded by others. Ironically, this very fear drives the behavior that manifests the fear. The difficulty for the 23rd shadow is that it tends to make human beings know that they are right, which firmly closes the door on their being open to the views of others. So as I read this, it really <clears throat> spoke to this Mercury, Mercury retrograde again in Taurus, this slowing down, pausing before we speak, you know, pausing before we react. We've had Mars squaring Chiron. And there's been a lot 
of deep, deep inner child work of wounds and repressed emotions coming up to the surface, frustrations coming up to the surface as we relate to our lives with, with jobs, with, with friends, with family, with colleagues, and really with ourselves. So this time right now is to go inward to really focus more on ourself in order to then be able to hear and be open to other people's perspectives and stories and points of view, especially as the lunar nodes switch axis into Aries and Libra, which will be really focused upon our external relationships. So going back to the book, within this 23rd gene key lies a secret of timing. Because the 23rd shadow concerns the way in which your brain translates thoughts into linguistic patterns, it is through this gene key that all manner of speech difficulties can occur. This process of timing and mistiming happens at a level well below your conscious awareness. It is not the words themselves that cause the static between the speaker and the listener, but the subtle cadences of intonation itself. If even the subtlest trace of fear drives your speech, then that speech can never be fully imbibed by the listener. However, when someone speaks or writes from their heart, you will understand the gist of what they are saying, regardless of how they say it. And here's this beautiful feminine energy and this flow state and this really coming back into the heart and not letting the mind react. It's just coming back in and being loving and compassionate to self and others right now. The repressive nature of the shadow is dumb. And this is seen when societies keep others silent. He's seeing fear at work through this shadow. If you are choked by fear, you cannot speak clearly, if at all. And so these people slowly learn not to say what they really think, instead lapsing into silence or superficiality. This is particularly true of children who have oppressive parents. We all know that feeling of when we shut down our throat chakra and swallow our words and in fear of how are they going to be received? How are they going to be perceived? So this is, the, this is where the throat comes in of not being able to, to speak what we truly feel versus the reactive nature which is fragmented. And he says the other side of the shadow is the expressive nature, which often cannot stop talking. These are people who always say the wrong thing or they say the right thing, but at the wrong time. They spend an enormous amount of energy trying to be heard, only to find that they are constantly pushed away. And I think that you can see and feel when times in your life when you've tried to do that the anger that can start to be harvested as you feel misunderstood as you feel as though your words are falling upon deaf ears and we can apply this outside of ourselves in our relationships but also to our own self once again of the masculine and the feminine energies within our own self. What are we doing to not hear our feminine speak of saying, slow down, rest, or vice versa with, with the masculine of like doing something. I need to, I need to do something more. I need to express, right? I need to express this energy outward and that being too fearful that you're being held back. So it's, again, this beautiful balance that needs to happen within ourselves of doing and not doing, speaking and silent, knowing when 
and how and with whom to to share how sometimes we need to speak to others and sometimes it just needs to be expressed through artwork or dance or writing uh, richard rudd was talking a lot about how um, our hands are these amazing tools that we have you know to to create to express this energy outward moving on to the gift of the 23rd jinky the gift is simplicity and just reading here again from the book the mind does not trust simplicity because it thrives on complexity the more complicated something is the more the mind can think about it so when we come to this 23rd gift we are learning one of the greatest secrets of a happy life keep it simple the 23rd gift abhors clutter and jargon it communicates precisely clearly and with great economy the power of simplicity is to create efficiency wherever it goes people exhibiting the gift of simplicity waste nothing in life their living areas usually reflect their thinking with plenty of open space and room to breathe simplicity is a state of being the gift level of frequency is a clearing house for the process of preparing you to realize siddic awareness as such the 23rd gift is an ongoing process in which more and more clutter is gradually removed from your inner and outer life as your mind clears spaciousness opens inside of you allowing you to see things with great clarity another manifestation of this frequency is a slowing down of your internal system and a gradual lessening of your need to resolve everything in your life emotions are allowed to follow their natural course thoughts begin to have more gaps between them and physical impulses are either observed objectively and dispassionately or are indulged without guilt everything inside your nature begins to become clear the many problems of your life are seen as phantasms created by your mind acting upon your desires you naturally begin to turn within and contemplate your own essence the gift gives way to the city of quintessence and i'm just going to read the final two paragraphs of this inky the real power of the 23rd city is therefore in its direct transmission in the flesh the words that emerge from this city are phenomenally potent at the moment of their utterance once the 23rd city has fully dawned inside a person they become an alchemical agent like quicksilver they bind themselves to people and find their way into the cracks within the mental structure around such a person you will undergo a series of spontaneous simplifications as the continued presence of their aura slowly begins to extract the quintessence from the dross placed within you by your culture and conditioning as a recipient of this vibration you will inevitably go through a complete deconstruction which may be very difficult for you like all such alchemical processes it can be extremely dangerous to your mental health unless you complete the entire process this 23rd city is a custodian of a sacred truth trust your own inner path before any external teaching or teacher in the case of the buddha many millions of buddhists have followed his teachings and very few have been able to read between the words and extract the living quintessence however the truths left by the great masters are far easier to embody than your mind believes to follow the mystical path is to surrender utterly to that which is within you no matter where it leads you 
The middle way is not, as it sounds, a delicate path threading between the opposites. It is a path of complete abandon that is formed as each foot falls before you. It is a path sculpted from the void, untrodden by anyone before you, and therefore without law, rhyme, nor reason. To walk this path, you will have to dig deep within yourself and revel in that true quintessence that only you can recognize. This is the Buddha fever. So, a beautiful time that we're in right now, and at the same time, it is requiring us to continue to dig deep and go within and to continue decluttering our inner world, our inner realms, so that we may see and feel and hear and trust the new path forward that we are co-creating with the divine. And with that, I am complete and I will pass the mic now to Jason, who will be leading us through the Unified Chakra Technique and a beautiful healing transmission. So thank you, Jason. Just taking a moment to first connect with your breath. Allowing the body to find an ease to it. And if you're sitting, take this time to reach down and grab those sides of that fleshy area to the left and to the right of those sit bones and kind of move them out of the way so that you feel those connection points. And then tucking the pelvis ever so slightly, engaging that core to create more of a flat back and allow that straightening to move up the spine get up to the throat and neck and tucking the chin back to create a little more of a flatness there too so you have a straight spine and then even though there is some engagement allow yourself to almost dangle as you're being lifted through the crown like an ethereal thread is holding up your weight I breathe in light through the center of my heart, opening my heart into a beautiful ball of light, allowing myself to expand. I breathe in light to the center of the legacy in the middle of my sacrum, opening the legacy into a beautiful ball of light. I move the legacy into the heart, allowing myself to expand. I breathe in light into the heart of the legacy, allowing the light to expand, encompassing my throat chakra and my solar plexus chakra in one unified field of light within, through, and around my body. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy allowing the light to expand, encompassing my brow chakra and my navel chakra in one unified field of light within, through, and around my body. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy, allowing the light to expand, encompassing my crown chakra and my base chakra in one unified field of light within, through, and around my body. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy, 
allowing the light to expand, encompassing my astral, electromagnetic, and causal bodies in one unified field of light within, through, and around my body. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy, allowing the light to expand encompassing my alpha chakra, eight inches above my head, and my omega chakra, eight inches below my spine. I allow the waves of Metatron to move between these two points. I vibrate the waves, within, through, and around my body, into my astral, electromagnetic, causal bodies, perfectly attuning them into one unified field of light. I create the kingdom. I am a unity of light. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy, allowing the light to expand, encompassing my eighth chakra above my head and my upper thighs in one unified field of light within, through, and around my body. I allow my emotional body to merge with my physical fields. I am a unity of light. I breathe in light with the heart of the legacy allowing the light to expand, encompassing my ninth chakra above my head and my lower thighs in one unified field of light, within, through, and around my body. I allow my mental body to merge with my physical fields. I am a unity of light. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy, allowing the light to expand, encompassing my 10th chakra above my head and to my knees in one unified field of light within, through, and around my body. I allow my spiritual body to merge with my physical fields, creating the throne. I am a unity of light. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy, allowing the light to expand, encompassing my 11th chakra above my head and my upper calves in one unified field of light within, through, and around my body. I allow the oversoul to merge with the throne. I am a unity of light. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy, allowing the light to expand, encompassing my 12th chakra above my head and my lower calves in one unified field of light within, through, and around my body. I allow the Christ Oversoul to merge with the throne. I am a unity of light. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy, allowing the light to expand, encompassing my 13th chakra above my head and my feet in one unified field of light within through and around my body. I allow the I am oversoul to merge with the throne. I am a unity of light. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy, allowing the light to expand, encompassing my 14th chakra above my head and below my feet one 
unified field of light within, through, and around my body. I allow the Keter Oversoul to merge with the throne. I am a unity of light. I breathe in light to the heart of the legacy. I ask that the highest level of my spirit and the divine presence radiate forth from the throne in the heart of the legacy, filling the kingdom completely. I radiate forth throughout this day. I am a unity of spirit. Imagine a thick line of light beginning at the Omega Chakra, eight inches below your spine, extending upwards through your spine and on upwards into the upper part of the unified field. Ground into the vastness of your spirit, allow your spirit to stabilize you. Run 12 lines of light downward from the point of the Omega Chakra, opening around your feet like a cone, with a 13th line in the center. You are not grounding into the earth. You're stabilizing yourself across the parallel realities of the planetary hologram. field, allow yourself to scan this physical body, this mental body, this emotional body, and this spiritual body. See and feel all of the things that are wanting to be heard and seen. Allow each of these things to be acknowledged. And now start to look in between in between the sounds of my voice, the sounds that are close by in your presence, the sounds from just outside, and even far away, there is a silence. Focus in on this silence until you notice that there truly is no silence at all. There is a beacon, a constant frequency, a higher conscious connection that's always there. always being transmitted, but it has a carrier wave. It means there's two-way communication. Allow yourself to float through the sounds into this place of higher consciousness, this place of frequency that is always there this place 
that connects us to that higher shelf, that all-knowing place. Feel into it. Feel into this stream, divine, high vibration frequency. This thing that lets us know that we are not only alive, but we are connected to something greater, something more. Allow this to come through strong and clear. Allow the other sounds to be distant for a moment. Allow the sound to become so great you wonder why it hasn't always been there, and yet it has. Focusing in on this God sound. The eyes closed. See. This connection. Focus through that third eye and see a small pulsing ball of light. And as you concentrate in these waves start from the center and grow and dim as they get to the edges and then brightens in the center this pulsing notice that it's an eye this eye watching over you this eye allowing you to be seen. This eye letting you know you're never truly alone. Notice the colors. as they brighten, as they dim on the edges through the pulsing. Perhaps there's a pulsing in the sound as well, or a chirping. rushing, and now see yourself moving through that eye moving behind that mirror, that glass of reflection. And as it moves over you, you see a vastness of stars, planets, below this beautiful blue and green planet. You allow yourself to move down through to it.
finding yourself surrounded by a beautiful forest, an ancient forest, with a temperature that's not too cold and not too hot. can feel beneath your feet the loamy forest floor, your shins tickled by the dew from the ferns as you walk through this forest, these gigantic trees, these trees that have been there throughout time connecting with its roots to the celestial body and its crown to the heavens. As you step through, seeing the dappled sunlight, perhaps hearing the birds and other wildlife, You see before you clearing. This clearing made by a family of redwoods, all set in a circle, sharing each other's nutrients from the ground. Not one leaf from one tree to the next touches as they all equally share the sunlight from above. As you gaze into the center of this clearing, you can see a small stone ring only a few feet across. seems to be beautiful sun rays shining through the trees creating a nice perfect ray of light across this stone ring and as you approach you see a glassy undisturbed surface And as you peer into it, you can see not only this beautiful ring of treetops, but yourself in its most perfect form. How you are seen in the divine. Seeing some warm mists coming from this glassy, watery surface, you can see through that there are some stone steps spiraling down, inviting you to step in. You test the water with your toes. It feels magical, almost effervescent at first, scrubbing away any dirts and pains, and nice and warm and relaxing, you allow your foot to go to the first step, and these warm waters flow over your toes around your foot bones and up past your ankles and there's a sense of relaxation a sense of release from the tension in your feet 
the stress and resistance of feeling disconnected, it all seems to flow away. Taking another step down, the water moves up over your calves to just under your knees. And all those feelings of not being able to propel yourself forward and let go of the emotional ties just seems to fall away. Leaving your lower legs smooth and relaxed. You take another step down and as the waters flow over your knees and up to your middle thighs, you feel at ease, the clarification of connection from your ancestors brings new light to who you are and where you are, allowing your release of any tension, resistance, knowing that these are truly lines of communication as well from not only your past, but your ancestors. Taking another step down, you feel the waters slowly slide up past your pelvis, encompassing that lower chakra, that base of the spine, and the warmth of it allows for a deep release. And with it, you feel that connection all the way down through to this celestial body that is truly supporting you. Breathing into this space, you can feel places opening. You can feel tightness, finding equilibrium. Feeling a space in that pelvic bowl, in this area of this root and sacral chakras that is at peace. Making another step down, the water flows up just past your belly button. Right to the solar plexus. And as it hovers there, you can feel that empowerment and that release of tension at the same time feeling of confidence, a feeling of assuredness, a feeling of connection to your inner strengths in a way that allows you to have ease in this moment. Taking another step down, you let your arms move out to your sides as the water moves up now over your heart so that your arms are now floating as well, feeling the buoyancy and connection with these healing soothing waters, 
allowing these tensions in the back to release, knowing that it creates flow and support. Feeling those elbows and those wrists and those fingers soothe into the waters. Having that communication of the heart body as it pulses the lifeblood through, through the entire body. Knowing that this healing place can spread and give life and support and love to all the areas within. Taking another step down, you notice with that step, your body releases you find yourself fully floating, your head cradled by the water, feeling these waters move up around the back of your head, covering your ears and your jaw, knowing that you are perfectly safe supported and held with ease and grace. Allowing those neck and throat muscles release. creating a portal of communication from these earthly areas and bodies within through to these heavenly ones, finding that peace in the trust within yourself. Allowing these messages from the lower body be heard and experienced. Shooting up through that crown to that higher place. Just as the trees have their leaves pointed to the sun. Allowing yourself now to breathe deeply with each expiration of breath, releasing that which no longer serves. You feel your body sink a little into the waters. Feeling this place of love surrounding you. And with each inspiration of breath, pulling in that divine life force, which invigorates every cell in our body.
And as you gaze up out of this water, staring at this portal into the sky, looking at the beautiful artistry above you as the setting sun gets lower. You can see some of the stars and planets shining through. As you continue to gaze and the sun continues to set, these bright blues become darker blues. Into the beautiful deep violets. Seeing the vast sea of stars and planets before you, you take notice that the space between the points of light knowing that in this space lies that same frequency you connected to earlier, that sound, high divine frequency, knowing that is in, through, and around your bodies. Taking a few deep breaths now, starting to wiggle your fingers and your toes, allowing yourself to stretch, releasing any residual tightness, allowing your eyes to start to connect to the light, slowly open, soft gaze. Taking one final deep breath in and release. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is.